What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome again to another episode of Tuffy Talk. And we got another exciting episode today because it's really just, again, another opportunity for another uh, winner of, of one of our giveaways to appear with us. And again, just talk state stuff. And, uh, you know, especially right now, there's a lot of good stuff going for, for NC State. Obviously, coming off of a huge win against Clemson. Uh, you know, I mean, right now, there's, you know, a lot of excitement with, uh, you know, women's basketball and, and swimming and diving and you name it. So, so I know we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. And so, first of all, I want to welcome uh, uh, Tyler uh, here with us, uh, one of our winners of the giveaway. So, Tyler, thank you so much for joining us here today, my friend. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Glad to have you. So, so first of all, I want to kind of start off. So, I mean, you know, kind of tell tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're from, what your history is with NC State. Um, you know, just kind of give an overview of yourself as a person, but also too as a state fan. Okay. So I grew up in Western North Carolina. I was born and raised an NC State fan. My dad graduated in '76, so I've grown up coming to basketball games, football games. And I, you know, it's just been, it was kind of tough because where I grew up, there weren't really that many NC State fans. So I recruited my best friends. And so we've had our strong group of, you know, diehard NC State fans. And uh, I went, I went to state, uh, graduated high school in 2002 and went to state and pursued other things. I never finished, but, you know, my love for the school is just, you know, Everybody that knows me knows that I'm a diehard state fan. So mm -hmm. after the game Saturday, I was just I was getting messages during the game and after the game, you know, people didn't know if I was there or not, but they were assuming that I probably was. So, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, especially for I mean, it sounds like yourself, but also to probably people like Macon and myself or whatever, who, you know, people will say, were you at the game on Saturday? It's like. You think we would be anywhere else than yeah. be there for that game with that <laughs> yeah. opportunity to beat yeah. Clemson? Uh, we wouldn't miss that for right. anything. So, right. yeah, no. So, so what yeah, was your? I actually have a wedding. Oh. I have a wedding coming up. I'm supposed to go to. Uh -huh. uh, it's the same day as the Louisville game, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get out of that. But I, I'm. It's gonna. It's gonna yeah. depend uh, on the time of of how I can juggle this thing. So. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like with the Louisville game. It depend the the game will depend a lot on which Malik Cunningham you get. So, you know, if you mm -hmm. get the not so great Malik Cunningham, you know, it might not be that great of a game. But if you do get the good Malik Cunningham, it might be a close game. So it's kind of like a fifty oh, yeah. fifty shot, and if it's worth you know trying to jump through hoops, you know, to make happen. So, uh, right. but um, but you know, so so want to kind of I mean, just give us like your initial thoughts of of uh, of the Clemson game. I mean, obviously. Huge win for sure, um, you know, but maybe even kind of take a step back too. So maybe before the Clemson game had started, what was your kind of take on Doran? I mean, were you sold on Doran before the Clemson game and this maybe kind of sold you a little bit or were you already kind of on the Doran train? You know, when I was talking to these guys last week, I love Coach Doran. I love his coaching philosophy. I love his recruiting philosophy. Um, I like the way that he teaches when you listen to him. In his press conferences, he's he sounds like a professor. He is just very detailed with, you know, the terminology that he uses. But we've really struggled to really have these major wins. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I felt like this was a must win game for us because we've been so close and, you know, there was a lot of grumblings from the fan base after the Mississippi State loss. And, you know, I don't think they would have fired him after that, but I think that I don't know. I think he really needed this one to kind of galvanize the fan base to really show like th it's working. The process is working itself out. And, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't had that proof of it. I felt like it was there. You see these re recruits that we're, we're bringing in. They're high character kids. They're, you know, quality football players. And, but the wins haven't really been there. And, yeah. So I was kind of torn on it. I really like him. I was ho I'm been holding out for it, but we needed something to really prove that that we were getting over because we've been so close. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it, it felt like 2016 again, where we felt like we were building <laughs> to something else. You know, yeah. and then we had that letdown, and it's like it felt like it set us back, and we needed something to just kind of a catalyst to shoot us up, and you know, recruiting and 
for the excitement within the program. And well, I knew we could do it, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sure. Well, because one thing over the weekend, which really stood out to me that kind of I look at as kind of an example of maybe what state was in 2016 was look at Auburn, you know, this past this past week. So, you know, the week before they lost to Penn State, it was a tough game, a really back and forth game where, you know, it was, it was close and then they lost and then they went up and, and lost to Georgia State. You know, you kind of see that, you know, that 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 obviously that Penn State game lingered. And it, and it obviously held on right. to them. So, so, you know, that's, so I kind of look at that and I go, Hey, you know I mean? With, with NC state, we're kind of through that phase, you know, hopefully, hopefully now we're again, I mean, and because every single, every single year, if you kind of group years together, you kind of see the progression and mm-hmm. it's getting better and better and better. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely uh, in agreement, but yeah, I, I definitely think that, that I agree with you that having this major win is just, is just basically just to sell all fans that Dorn's our guy for long term. Right, oh, yeah. right, mm-hmm. right. And I think it kind of proves you still kind of have the haters from the outside that are going to try to minimize what we did. But, you know, I think it kind of, you know, proves to everyone else too, like, okay, these, these boys, they are for real. That was a fluke. That was, you know, an outlier. That's not going to be yeah. who this team really is. So, yeah, well, because everybody's talking about how bad Clemson's offense is and, and it's like, could it possibly be that maybe we just have a, re- a, a really good defense? I mean, is that yeah. a possibility? Right. I'll tell you what, that's bugged me. Right. It's like, it's not like you're playing like uh, Pembroke or anything like that. It's right. like you're, you're playing like a team that's always has been pretty known to have a solid, pretty good football program. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why it's Number- like this. Oh, yeah. well, like uh, Paul Feinbaum was like, oh, let's all, you know, I don't know if they're going to have a great, where's Clemson's program heading now? Like they're just going. Is that, that, that should to me to be just like an insult. Like it's like you yeah. really think we're that bad. Well, it, it's like it's like it, it's it. I mean, they, they were winning national championships, winning AC championships all the way through last year, and going to college football playoffs left and right. It's like, like, and, and again, I, I was kind of laughing with the Clemson fans going, "Are you going to fire Dabo Sweeney? Like, do you want him fired now? Like, you know, come on now, seriously. Yeah. Like, don't don't be questioning Dabo because of one bad season. Okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, especially when you lose guys." Like Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and you're having now as many injuries as they as they've had now, um, with Breesy being out for the season. It's going to be a tough road, but I mean, you know, I mean, it, I, I think I agree. you look at it too. You know, they they played Georgia, who has maybe the best defense in the country, and then they play Georgia yeah. Tech in a tight game, who actually may be better than what people thought that they were. They sure look good Saturday night, mm-hmm. and and then our defense. So it's not like they're playing you know, bad teams either and, and very right. winning. So that's true. And they're loaded with four and five star recruits still. So yes, they are. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yes, they are. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm curious to know, you know, if you said you were at the game, um, can you just take us through what you were thinking, you know, going at the end of regulation and then going into double overtime at the end of the game? What were your thoughts? <clears throat> So, you know, when it felt like – so when I came into the game to begin with, came into the stadium like 45 minutes before kickoff, it felt like there was electricity in the stadium even then. And I was – Oh, yeah. I texted one of my best friends who's a state fan, and I texted my girlfriend and said, this place feels electric. You know, we'll see how that, that plays out. And throughout the game, you could tell we were dominating them. We were pushing them around. We were – dominating every statistical category and Mm -hmm. it felt like one of these things where we could if we can just gain some traction and hit some of those big plays that we could kind of cruise but we weren't doing it and when we missed the two field goals I kind of just pushed it off because I know Chris Dunn is like inside 40 yard lines he's he's basically money Mm -hmm. but outside of that he's struggled a little bit more especially over 50 so when we're you know especially the third and fourth quarter, we cleaned up the penalties and we're just chunk plays the entire game. And 
and we're grinding them down. You could look at their players, their defensive linemen, and they have their hands on their hips. You mm-hmm. could tell they were tired. They're trying to sub players in and out. Mm-hmm. And you could tell we were grinding them down. And so when we went, you know, the score was basically the same as it was in 2016. Right. So there's always that, like, in the back of our minds, like we're trying to not talk about, you know, don't mention the shutout type thing. Don't mention the yep. perfect game. Yep. Um, so – but it was like it's like it was setting up exactly the same, mm-hmm. and it's funny that I heard Doran in his press conference say exactly what I said during the game to my dad was as we're marching down the field, and I can tell we're going to get close enough. I'm thinking this is going to be redemption. Chris Dunn is going to redeem himself. Yep. He's an outstanding <laughs> kicker. Well, He's going to redeem himself, and this is the great way to write this story. You know, like. Completely different. Like you thought it was the same as 2016, but yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's completely different. We're going to win at this time. And, and yeah. they even did the same thing where, same as Ryan Finley, where, you know, you you run it to the middle of the field to line him up for a straight straight take on knee. kick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, take a knee. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to make it. And, and from where I was sitting, which that's the side of the field that I was on, on the home side, it looked like it went through. It was I, plenty right. long. It, it was close. Yeah. I, I thought, thought it was too. Yeah, I yeah. did too. But but again, we I'm, celebrated. I was I was hollering like, <laughs> oh. and then they I saw the the riff wave it off, and I thought, oh my god, oh, not no, again. yeah, please no, not well, again. Well, in my in my immediate, I, in my immediate thoughts, obviously went out to Chris Dunn and just thinking back to the Kyle Bambar situation, and immediately thinking to myself, right, I please pray to everything that again people need to learn at the end of the day that. God, I mean, I mean, dude, Chris Dunn is one of the biggest competitors on that team. And he's also one of the best in his position on, on, you know, like meaning he, he is a great kicker. He is a great kicker. And, and this game does not change anything, any, any, any opinion about that. So like, for example, like Dorn, right. uh, I think it was Joe Ovis today in his press conference. He got at Joe Ovis asked, him, I can't you know, stand Joe. would you like, you know, when you scored the touchdown in the first service time, did you think about going for two? And and Joe may not have no. meant it like this, but Doran kind of took that as, are you saying just because you know Chris Dunn missed us missed us field goals mm-hmm. that I, that I wouldn't go for two? Like he pointed out, he immediately pointed out right. saying Chris Dunn's made 119 straight PATs. So no, I had 100 percent right. confidence in him. Yeah. I still have 100 percent confidence. If mm-hmm. I had to go for a, a 50 yard field goal against Louisiana Tech to kick that field goal, I still have the same confidence yeah. in him. And even more right. confidence, I would say. Right. Because, again, I, and I pointed this out on our live stream, and I'll point out to you again, Tyler. At the end of the day, he is such a competitor that for the team to literally take, literally put his arm around him, say, hey, Chris, we got you, bro. Mm-hmm. We got this for you. And to pull out a right. game like that shows me the chemistry and the, the respect that Absolutely. these players have for each other. And I guarantee you, Chris is going to be making some field goals this year that he probably maybe wouldn't have otherwise, or like beforehand, because mm-hmm. he is going to be more say. Right. You had me this game. I'm going to get you this game. Watch this, boys. So right, yeah, right. It seemed like it. It was almost like it was like you said. It was setting up perfectly to be, you know, this poetic redemption of we're going to beat Clemson this time on a on a last second kick, and then right. football gods were just like, no, we're just messing with yeah. you, <laughs> right? So it, I mean, I I felt physically sick when we missed it. I just I was so nervous <laughs> after that. Yeah. You know, oh, but. Oh yeah, but again, it's it's really just showed the progression of this program. That fact that we were able to fight back, stay strong, stay to what we've been doing the entire game, and make the plays we needed to to win. Because at the end of the day, we made the plays Clemson didn't, which I think that says a right. lot about this program. I really do. So um, I do too, and I think a lot of that comes from like the 2019 season where a lot of the games that year felt that same way where it was like it was we were kind of in it for a while and then there would be a play that just rip, ripped your heart out and all those young guys that were playing then they grew up and really matured and came together as a team and all those guys are our leaders right now and yeah they yeah. weren't gonna they weren't gonna let it slip away it was it was mm-hmm. awesome mm-hmm. so let me ask you this so now we've got the win in our belt mm-hmm. what are your thoughts of the program like the team right now we're 3 and 1 one and zero in the ACC, going back to the home, back playing at home. Another night game, which I can't believe we've had this many night games so far this it's season. Amazing, okay, neither. Yeah, no. it's like it. You no know, noon games. You know, uh, it's, it'll happen. I mean, and honestly, if we get a noon game at this point, I'll be like, fine, that's fine with me. We've had so many. Even- but what are your thoughts about where this team is? 
I'm really excited about the future. So, I mean, we've had, we have so much depth, you know, which we're having to use right now with the guys that mm -hmm. we have injured, but these guys have played a lot of football for us for years and they're the leaders on the team. They're the starters, but there's so much talented depth behind them. And so I'm excited about what that means for this year. And I'm excited about what it means for the future too, because every one of these games that's left on the schedule look very winnable right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. because of that maturity that we have, I don't, I don't anticipate there being let down games or games that we, you know, trap games, games we're looking, looking past. I don't think that the leaders mm -hmm. on the team will allow that to happen. I don't think no way. that will be in the discussion. So no way. every single game seems winnable and, and they're going to be tough. I think a lot of the games will be nearly as tough as the one Saturday because there's some really yeah. talented teams left in the ACC. I, on I agree schedule, with but. that. I think that's a really good observation because, I mean, I know Clemson is a top 10 team. I I mean, no. you could there's, you could argue a lot of ways that State going into the I game was, yeah. the better, was the better team. What did I say? Well, you, you said they were a top, well, or a top 10 team. Like, well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, not, not anymore. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. My, whole, my whole point is, though, yeah. I mean, you're going to have to go and play – on the road at an undefeated Wake Forest team right now yep. that we have not yep. had a good record playing in Winston Salem, and mm -hmm. then no. Boston College. I think I think the Wake Forest game makes me nervous the most. I think I actually think the Miami game is going to be sneaky tough because mm -hmm. it's so far away from home and it's. I mean, they're so talented; they just need to get their act together. Um, but yeah. that I'm you, that Boston College, they have to go and play Clemson this week. After Clemson lost, granted they could still beat Clemson. That's gonna be um, a heck of a game. But that then they have to then go and play us. So Boston College has to play Clemson and then NC State as their first two conference games, I believe. I don't think they played anybody else. So mm, no. no, but not not in a conference game. So mm -hmm. that's gonna be big for them. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be big for Boston College. So to me. It's gonna be very interesting how these these things uh, shake up moving forward. Well, and and the one and the one thing too, actually, with Wake Forest, I'm actually confident because of the fact that so your best, arguably your best offensive player right now is a Mecca Mezzi. I mean, I think we could you know argue that or agree on that all together right now. Argue, it's arguable, yeah. yeah. I think it's and, for and sure <laughs> so, uh, so this guy four years ago, the last time he went to Wake Forest. All, all but famously fumbled at the goal line mm. and obviously was emotional as all get out because, I mean, I know he felt like mm. we lost that game because of him, which obviously I think all state fans would agree it wasn't because of him. Uh, that was that was a, a, right. an opportunity, but it wasn't because of him. So for this game, four yeah. years later, and he has grown leaps and bounds into arguably now a NFL caliber talent that definitely I think NFL teams will take a look at. Um, and I, I see this guy going off that game. I see... I see an experienced, talented wide receiver with a point to prove. Being like, you had me that, you had me that time. Well, watch me this time, man. And I'm, I'm like, you know, like I'm gonna go get, you know, 150 yards receiving. I'm gonna get two touchdowns, and you know, we're gonna score 35 on you easily, and and defense will mm -hmm. take care of it. And because you know, again, I mean, Wake is 100 percent respectable. I mean, I think they're as, so as solid of a team as they come. I just don't know, and, and, and like you know, if you were looking at the teams that you would, I, I I would take NC State's team right now over Wake. But again, I it's exciting for me though. Honestly, I love that. Honestly, the Atlantic is coming down to Boston College, Wake Forest, and and NC State right now. I mean, I think but that everybody's looking at those teams. Go I ahead. will say this though: Clemson could still they know, could they still they could still win it. I mean, it's like not like that they're just totally out of it. No. But now they have a little bit of yeah. a tougher road. Yeah. And, when they have a third string running back, they're going to have to go for the rest of the season for the most part. A lot of it, that yeah. It ain't going to be easy. Um, no. But, you know, I, yeah, that's only that I'm going to say. I just don't feel like that. If, 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 if Clemson doesn't have the leaders to bounce back from a iffy win against Georgia Tech against us, I just don't know if they're going to be able to bounce back against, you know, just as good of a team as in Boston College. I mean, you know, again, it's not necessarily going to get easier for them. You know, I mean, it's still going to be, and, and you know, I, th I can't remember who it was. I was listening to, uh, you know, somebody who was saying, you know, that he that when people approached him after they lost to Georgia and were asking him, 
well, how's the college football playoff committee going to look at a, a one loss Clemson? And he, he literally went back saying, how do you know they're done losing? And then they lost to NC yeah. State. People say, how do you think the college football playoffs committee is going to look at it? Right. Two lost Clemson. How do you know they're done losing? Like, you know, like, so it's, 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 it's a, it's a crazy thing right now. They but, just get um, the benefit of the doubt because they're Clemson. Exactly. Exactly. So, but, so yeah, Tyler, so kind of jumping in, into a, a little bit of difference. So, um, you know, wanted to kind of ask a little bit about, so, uh, you know, obviously, looking at kind of some of the other sports. So are, are there any sp- uh, specific sports that you follow specifically outside of football? Mainly I follow basketball. basketball. Ba- yeah, basketball pretty close, but mainly I'm just, I'm diehard football. I don't follow basketball as closely as I used to, mm-hmm. but I still follow the team pretty close a little, and recruiting a little also. I got you. Well, cool. we'll we'll save that here for the next episode, actually. So, uh, so we'll we'll do we'll okay. we'll jump into that. But uh, um, you know, one last question I wanted to ask, uh, just kind of fun. So, um, you know, I think that it's very clear to me, and I know that a lot of people have been talking about it recently. And actually, Mike and I were part of a all sports uh, ACC uh, podcast. And one of the things that they had actually said to us is how amazing of a job Debbie Yao did here at NC State. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I wanted to kind of ask you a little bit in terms of, like, what your thoughts were on Debbie's legacy at NC State and, you know, kind of what your thoughts overall were of her her time here and, and, you know, the mark that she made. I think her legacy is obviously that she she elevated every single team, Mm -hmm. you know, every sport she – has I mean we have championship caliber programs for you know so many other sports and mm-hmm. I think when you add on to the fact that she's KL's sister and so it just kind of compounds that legacy a little bit more yeah but yeah you know the homage she pays to the past and you know with Reynolds and the renovations there and I think that she's she's blended the past with the present and, and taking it to the future with the way she's elevated things. Yep. And one last fun question, who's your favorite NC state football player ever? Ever, ever. Um, my freshman year, Phillip rivers was still the quarterback. And that's the year that my freshman year is the year that we beat Florida state at home and rushed the field in. Mm-hmm. and went to the Gator Bowl and beat Notre Dame. So it was always fun watching Phillip and how fired up, you know, he would be on the field. Mm-hmm. So he's still entertaining when he does interviews. So Oh, he's awesome. Oh. He's hilarious. Uh, yeah. I'd say, yeah. say Phillip. He's hilarious, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all so much again for tuning in. Please make sure, again, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner as it really helps support us in the channel. And also do make sure to give us a follow at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter or Instagram uh, as we're always doing giveaways. We're always talking, you know, state updates and et cetera. So make sure to follow us there. And then also, too, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Check out all of our other great NC State content. Um, always come out with new and exciting stuff. So make sure to always tune in and uh, and make sure to join us for this, our next episode. And thank you all so much for joining again. As always, go pack, y'all.